The second step of aerobic respiration goes by many different names. Some textbooks will call it the citric acid cycle. Others will name it after the guy who discovered it, the Krebs cycle. Or I've even seen it referred to as the TCA cycle, which stands for tricarboxylic acid cycle. No matter what name you go by, it's all the same thing. It's the final breakdown of glucose after the glucose was initially split in half by glycolysis. Now it happens in the matrix part of the mitochondria and the ultimate yield of the Krebs cycle for every one glucose that enters the cell, it gives you a pair of ATPs, eight NADHs, and a couple of FADH2s. And I'll discuss what those are a little bit more in just a moment. But first I wanna help make sure that you understand what's going on. Now if we take a look at any living organism that's a eukaryote, i.e. it has a nucleus, it'll have somewhere in the cell mitochondria. Like this plant cell, you can see it has mitochondria. And that's a trick question that a lot of teachers like to stick you with. They'll ask you um, which cells have mitochondria, and they want you to say just animal cells. But remember, plants do aerobic respiration to break down the sugar that they themselves are making for their own purposes. So if we take a look at the structure of the mitochondria, you can see it has an outer membrane, and then it has this folded inner membrane called the cristae. Within the cristae's folds, you'll have an inner space or compartment called the matrix. And this is why I tend to prefer talking about the Krebs cycle as opposed to using one of the other names because, hmm, let's see, the matrix. Ever seen that movie? Who starred in it? Keanu Reeves, K-R, Krebs cycle? Krebs cycle is used in respiration. It's one of those little memory tricks or mnemonics that'll help you recall which of all the different cycles happens in the matrix of the mitochondria versus what happens in the chloroplast during photosynthesis. If we take a look at the whole process of aerobic respiration, every step generates some ATP. The glycolysis takes in the glucose, splits it in half to form some pyruvate, and spits out a little bit of ATP, as well as a couple of these NADH molecules. The Krebs cycle takes in those pyruvates, breaks it up, spits out a little bit more ATP, and then sends off the NADH and FADH2, which are high energy electron carriers off to the electron transport system. You'll see that the Krebs cycle is what's generating the carbon dioxide that you breathe out every time you break down your sugar. And then the electron transport system is what generates the load of ATP that it is the purpose of the aerobic respiratory process using the energy of those high energy electrons. So let's take a closer look at the Krebs cycle. Now I've simplified a lot of the steps because most teachers don't m have you memorize each and every molecule's name as you go through the process. But in general what happens is that pyruvate from glycolysis out in the cytoplasm as it starts to enter into the mitochondria, enzymes will rip off a couple of high energy electrons and put them onto an electron carrier called NAD positive. You add two electrons, it becomes negatively charged, and then grabs a nearby positively charged hydrogen ion and becomes NADH. So this NADH is a full high energy electron carrier, full of high energy electrons, and it goes off to the electron transport system where those high energy electrons can be used to generate a lot of ATP. You have two carbons left because one of the carbons falls off when you pull off those high energy electrons. A two carbon group is called an acetyl group. You put it onto this holder or helper uh, molecule called coenzyme A. It's a coenzyme, which means it's not an enzyme, but it helps enzymes do their job. So we call this combination of two carbons plus coenzyme A, acetyl CoA. That two carbon acetyl group joins to a four carbon molecule called oxaloacetate right at the beginning of the Krebs cycle, forming a six carbon molecule called citric acid, which is why this is sometimes called the citric acid cycle. As that happens, the coenzyme A goes back to pick up another two carbon group from a broken down pyruvate, and it just keeps going back and forth, shuttling in the two carbon groups that came ultimately from the glucose that entered the cell you pluck off a couple of more carbon dioxides, and every time you do that, you pull out some high energy electrons, putting them onto those high energy carriers called NAD positive, turning them into NADH. Ultimately, in one of these steps, you can make a little bit of ATP. Every pyruvate that enters generates one ATP, so because every glucose, six carbon molecule, creates two pyruvates, you go one ATP, another ATP. 
Ultimately, you also wind up in this last part where you're regenerating that four carbon molecule that you began with right here called oxaloacetate. During this regeneratory process, you actually do make some FADH2 from an electron carrier called FAD. Now, you'll wind up making a lot more NADH than the FADH2, but don't worry, it's just a fad. All right, so that's the Krebs cycle. Pyruvate comes in, gets ripped apart. You put the high energy electrons that are helping hold the pyruvate together onto our NAD positive, making NADH. A couple of them go on to FADH2, and you make a little bit of ATP. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. 